Hi everyone, welcome back again to online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture, the synergy. Uh, today we are at lecture number 33 and we will be discussing on uh, different structural form and architecture in flat phone area. So, before starting this lecture, just let us quickly recap uh, the things we have discussed in last two uh, discussions that is the structure for the windy area and earthquake prone area. So, how we can make our building safe during that hazard and different structural system, different uh, building shape considerations are found to be instrumental and like that we will be getting some insight uh, in this discussion today. Uh, where we will see the you know building form and different technology by which we can make our building uh, little bit resilient to the flood uh, vulnerability. So, let us get started. So, what is a flood? So, we all know and recently in this year we have seen if you just search by the flood in 2019. So, we will get uh, many such pictures you just go to Google image and you will get uh, the image of the flood scenario and I have picked up this one. So, in this slide what we can get a uh, few uh, definitions or just concept of that. So, flood is an overflow of water that submerges the land that is usually dry. So, flood is a condition where it is a water lock situation uh, and due to uh, the overflow of the water it may be uh, due to the overflow of the river mostly that the case. Sometimes it may be some unprecedented drain which will just uh, you know submerge the city if the drainage system is poor and then that may be very much catastrophic. Unexpected and sudden storm can uh, also like create this kind of situation and recently if you just search about uh, some flood scenario in recent time like Patna in India. So, it is uh, basically uh, some rain that uh, is that has happened after a long year and the whole city that affected badly. The primary effects of flooding include the loss of life. Uh, it is a direct one where is a heavy flow that blown away the people that may or it may be something where uh, it is uh, the after effects like during the flood there will be more uh, problem with the health and then that may lead to the life loss. That also damage the buildings, different property, different infrastructure. Uh, so, we will be focusing on the building in this lecture, but uh, yes uh, this flood scenario will essentially uh, be a threat to reduce the economy. And also it provokes the secondary hazards such as winds, if you, if you see in this slide. Uh, the wind storms, then lightning, slope instability, ground settlement due to that liquefaction that we have uh, just discussed in uh, like um, in the previous lecture of the earthquake. And here you can see the pictures uh, where it is very badly waterlogged situation and then you can imagine that problem one may face where it is really area is flooded. Coming to the uh, flood problem and the fundamentals, the flood load uh, that is there. So, whenever there is a water lock situation, so uh, water will try to pass. So, it will have a direction, it will have a flow with a slope, natural slope. And on its way, if it gets some obstruction, definitely that will create some uh, thrust here. And at the opposite side, it will uh, have a negative pressure of the suction like the wind. So, again here if you can see the direction of the flow and then the opposite side it will have the problem. So, lateral forces resulting from static and dynamic water pressure in flat situation is very dangerous and it may be really catastrophic. And here you can see two such images where you can see the heavy flow of water how it really damaged the building and it is a total collapse. And you can get such example uh, many numbers uh, if you just search. So, this is really very risky uh, wherever the situation is like that. So, first of all with this water the ground the soil will very um, very much lose and then uh, that will uh, really uh, suddenly lose the uh, bearing capacity and that may result to the collapse of the building. And the reason uh, for damage in flood if you see that in this slide 
So, uh, it will depend on the flood depth like what is the level of the flood. So, if it is the surface level and the flood is for say 4 feet or maybe the 6 feet whatever uh, the depth. So, that will have. So, if it is uh, uh, very low. So, again the uh, you know again it will depend on the slope uh, that will decide the uh, movement that will also decide the velocity and then the depth and based on that whatever the damage of the building that may occur. So, whenever it is low considerably low may be half feet or one feet. So, normally the buildings they are having plinth. So, water will not really go inside to the room and uh, we can uh, just then also deal with that situation. But if it is beyond that a 4 feet 5 feet depth is basically uh, very much vulnerable. So, if the plinth is of not that height um, uh, at that height, so that will damage the building very badly. Then the flood duration. So, if we have a very proper drainage system or some mechanism to ease off the situation, so then the risk will be less. But if there is a very bad infrastructure or there is nothing to do, the duration is so long. So, for last 7 days or something the situation uh, exists, then the damage and loss will be more. Then uplift due to the soil saturation that is also relate to the um, your uh, liquefaction. So, uh, whenever a flood state for a longer duration, so this kind of scenario will happen. Then horizontal force created by the flood waves or current. So, this is basically what you can see in these two image and whatever I have described here the uh, direct thrust and the negative suction at the back uh, where uh, the flow is being obstructed by a building. The flood water can submerge building and cause various degrees of damage from you know straining the wall to the structural collapse. So, gradually it will create uh, the strain in the building that will deform the uh, uh, building and then that will collapse and it will also depend on the depth of the flood and the duration of the flood and also the type of the building. If your building is kacha type, normally if we consider the case of the rural area, so normally uh, they are making the brick maybe uh, made, making of uh, made of earth or maybe sometimes it is uh, like uh, some kind of you know admixture as cement to that. So, they will be more vulnerable uh, because they will not have that resistance to deal with that flow and the thrust provided by the you know water. Uh, but compared to that if you have some structure of RCC or maybe some very strong material that can uh, again resist something provided that the foundation is well anchored and then uh, the duration is not that much. Even if the duration is too much the subsoil will get uh, liquefied and then even the strong building will collapse and they just uproot it uh, from that. So, uh, here are some of the pictures which actually depicts the scenario where uh, the situation is really not welcoming the buildings whether it is new or old. So, that badly affected with the flow and here is the situation during the flood how you can uh, see that everywhere is the water and you can see how people they are threatened and if this will continue again the heavy rain all on. So, this building may also collapse like this video. Here is another image where you can see that the situation during the flood it is from uh, some different country here also you can see that how the whole area is now submerged. And uh, this is something from Patna. So, in recent flood, so you can see that construction like some of the buildings already submerged. So, you can only see the roof and uh, half of them are already uh, damaged. So, uh, again uh, this is really um, uh, not welcoming to the society. And this is another example where you can see the buildings how it submerged. Now, effect of flood on building damage, it may damage the foundation, it may damage the wall and the roof or everything together. So, it depends on the material that we use like for the foundation, for the rural area especially where the loss is more. So, you have to rebuild your structure once the flood uh, scenario has 
uh, you know gone. So, you have to rebuild the structure. So, this is something really uh, serious. But even sometimes if you make it with the timber or light material and not anchored properly, so the whole building can be blown away with the flow and there are many instances of that. So, it may be a brick or maybe brick and concrete kind of uh, um, foundation which may sustain bit and if it is like the RCC or maybe the steel. So, that will sustain depending on the depth whether you go for isolated foundation or pile foundation. So, depending on the foundation also it will depend. Now, the wall where the you know at, at the ground uh, above the ground the water will first uh, you know struct with that particular portion. So, if it is of earthen material that will have become porous if the duration is uh, quite low. So, that will be soft in and then there will be collapse. Then it may be of the cast iron sheet especially for the low cost construction this being used which will also not be strong enough to protect it like the brick even depending on the structural age of that construction machinery work. So, it will depend whether it is glass or an RCC. So, depending on that uh, the collapse and the degree of the damage will depend. So, that is true with the roof if it is a thatched roof and all. So, with the heavy rain and all so it will not really sustain whereas, you have a concrete roof flat roof that may sustain and sometimes it is also uh, you know advisable like whenever your building is to be built uh, in flat prone area. So, better to go for a flat uh, roof structure so that at least uh, during that situation uh, like people can just accumulate there at the rooftop and that we have seen in one of the images. And whatever we have discussed there, uh, so in this like uh, the design and construction of flat uh, prone building structure. So, we can work on the elevation of the structure. So, this elevation is different from the elevation that normally we used in architectural design that uh, the font view or something. This elevation is related to the height of the building with a uh, with corresponding to the uh, surface or the flood level. Then the dry uh, flood proofing is one of the technique we will be discussing that wet flood proofing may be one of the solution to reduce the risk uh, during the flood. It may be the flood walls that being constructed to protect it to certain level it may be the levy that we can create uh, uh, to control it. And then another is the anchorage and connection. So, whenever you make any light structure that should be anchored uh, very perfectly uh, with the foundation and if you make your structure with different materials. So, those connections uh, joints should be proper. So, beam should be well connected with the uh, columns and columns are well connected with the footings and then the so as for the roof uh, or the ceiling or the floor. So, that is the there. So, we will go one by one to just see what exactly uh, it means the dry flood proofing or the wet uh, flood proofing and we will try to understand. Coming to the elevation of the structure in this slide. Uh, so, elevation for the lowest inhabitable area should be above the base flood elevation. So, this is very important. So, in this case if you see that this is a base flood elevation level. So, you can easily see in the case of the first one. So, your building is imaged. So, this is not advisable and in this case you have a plinth up to this. This is just at the base uh, flood elevation. So, this is somehow uh, better, but when uh, this level will go up because with continuous rain and also this may definitely subject to go up. So, you uh, uh, should uh, make your structure uh, uh, like quite ever from this particular uh, BFE. So, then you can make your structure uh, like risk free. Uh, to some extent during the flood. But definitely when you make your building little bit raised from the surface, uh, maybe this is uh, the you know the land surface. So, when you make this plinth of that height definitely cost will be additional. You can easily make your plinth low, but uh, if we consider the risk associated with this flooding situation it may occur occasionally means unpredictable then it is different. But if you know that your 
building is uh, your site where you will make your building is really having this threat of the water logging or the flooding situation. So, definitely uh, spending little bit initially will really save a lot in long run. So, you can really sustain uh, during this situation. So, elevation of the structure is one of the important measurement by which you can uh, reduce the risk during the flood. This is the example what uh, just I have shown. This is a picture where you can see that uh, the situation is waterlogged, but as because you have a raised platform and you can see that this particular height where uh, this is raised. So, maybe this bottom portion you may use for some basement and you can see that ventilation. So, the f access to your room is uh, quite above to the uh, base flood elevation. So, this is considered to be safe or having better performance during the flood. This is again the same case where you can see with this particular stair you have uh, the level quite high and this could help during the you know a flood maybe of the 4 feet uh, depth or something. So, this heavy depth flood situation also these buildings can be survived. Coming to the dry flood proofing, so here is basically to protect the house against flood without allowing water to penetrate. So, we make our building, okay, we do not allow water to pass on. So, we, we make our building so strong that it will resist that particular flow. So, that is uh, something where you can use some additional foot uh, flood panel. So, this flood panel uh, will protect that uh, direct uh, thrust of the flood uh, water uh, towards that building and even here you can see like uh, the doors and other thing is uh, being protected with a movable uh, shield which will be removed when the flood level uh, reduced and then the risk uh, will be um, you know reduced or that will be lowered down. So, in this case we will not allow any water to penetrate. So, this is the dry flood proofing technique uh, that we can adopt. This is another picture of that where uh, this being protected. So, this is removable and this is the entry. So, uh, this is already being made with uh, some uh, you know plinth made of some stone uh, which will not really allow to penetrate the water. We have to remember if you go for the machinery work or the brick work it will be porous. So, that may also uh, affect uh, that may also get affected, but whenever you go for this plinth of stone or RCC that will be, but wherever there is entrance you cannot have this plinth and then you can go for with this flood panel. So, this is the way we can go with the uh, dry flood proofing. Now, coming to the uh, wet uh, flood proofing. So, in this case we will just take that okay, there is a flow of water, lead water uh, flow will not disturb and there will be and that if that flow is not disturbed that will not also disturb us. So, the concept is to allow water to pass on so, that is why it is called uh, weight proofing. So, here what you need to do you do not need to make any plinth as such you have to make your structure still. So, still this structure to be made where uh, you know this is having a good height considered to the uh, base uh, flood elevation and then allow water to pass on. So, in this case uh, this being made and here is uh, whenever there is no flood situation uh, we may use as a basement where the basement and this kind of structure being made and during the flood situation as because the flood is not very uncertain like earthquake. Uh, so, there will be forecast and there will be a you know scenario that okay, this water level is getting high. So, that is giving a alarm uh, to us and then if something is very much of uh, that utility in the basement kept. So, we can shift it uh, uh, in upper portion. So, that is it is uh, what is there. So, it, in this case we allow water to pass on. So, here is the example where you can see that is all the structures that being made uh, at uh, quite you know, not at the surface. It will have a height and we have only this particular columns and some bracing to just uh, hold the load and then during the flood 
uh, normally for the area in the coastal area or near the bank of the river this kind of structure will help. So, uh, during the flood levels water can pass on and then there will be no such damage. So, this can be one of the way out uh, during this uh, flood scenario. So, wet flood proofing is uh, one of the option. So, this is another uh, same uh, you know uh, example under this uh, wet flood proofing where you can see that uh, in absence of the flood scenario that may be used as a parking and all. Uh, and then uh, these are the you know panels that is removable during the flood we can remove it so that water can easily pass. So, whatever the direction there will be a predominant direction depending on the slope. So, everything is well calculated that if there is a race so where from the water will go and in which direction accordingly this can be oriented. So, this could be uh, helpful. So, this weight flood proofing technique may be adopted and um, that will reduce the risks during the flood. Coming to the flood walls, it is not the building. So, will not allow water to enter to my campus, enter to my own premises. So, then we create some RCC wall or some wall of them you know uh, some, some metal which will not allow water and they will have a considerable height. And then whatever the uh, water uh, locked in my uh, premises, so that will have some you know pumping system which will plus out the water outside. So, by which if we create the boundary uh, well sealed during the flood, so that may also sustain. So, a boundary uh, water proof or flood proof boundary wall or that is also referred as the flood walls will be helpful. So, here you can see that uh, how this can be. So, this area is basically having this you know water and uh, this is very dry. So, with the help of this panel and then um, the continuous uh, you know barrier. So, this will act as a flood uh, wall and that will protect. So, that similar kind of system we can adopt it is uh, maybe a temporary structure or we can make the RCC wall. So, that uh, will reduce the risk during the flood. Now, coming to the levee. So, here it is not basically the wall form. This is a reduce uh, that we can make a bump. Uh, we can create a natural slope with some kind of soil. So, that will not allow water to come inside and whereas, again like uh, the previous example. So, whatever the water accumulate within my premises, we can just uh, you know drain out that water with a pump uh, to this site. So, that by this also we can make our structure safe not the wall uh, just a mound. So, here you can see that this is a railway track and there is some water body and this is being protected. So, if there is increase in water during the flood. So, this will uh, initially help to not you know overflow this water to this site. So, this is the profile is being maintained like this. So, where water uh, rise. So, this being calculated what would be the maximum uh, flood level. Uh, for uh, rainy siege uh, scenario and based on that this uh, levy can be created. So, that the other side will get the protection. So, this can be used for uh, the road, it can be used for a city boundary like a initial like uh, similar to a dam, uh, but that can also be used for like where we do not prefer to have a boundary wall uh, for my building. We can use this. Along with that sometimes we also use uh, that flood barrier. So, it is nothing but a tube. So, this tube is filled with water and that will have weight. So, that will have enough strain to just resist the flow of the water and that can really help. So, this is a hollow balloon like structure. We either can put air uh, or else we can put some uh, water already. So, that will act as a barrier uh, during the flood. So, we may have the flood wall as a system, we can use the levy, we can also have this temporary tube that may act as a barrier. Now, coming to this uh, anchorage and the connection. So, here uh, what we need to remember that design should be 
uh, like that which uh, to be designed and executed to withstand the influence of vertical load, uplift force and lateral loads. So, vertical loads uh, definitely that will uh, happen whenever like there is some um, you know force acting on it and there will be some uh, saturation, soil saturation scenario. So, there will be some kind of uh, change in the subsoil. So, we have to make it very strong. So, they should, should not be something like where the building will tilt and then the foundation that will come out. So, that should be anchored properly beam shall be connected to the piles, columns, spires to the foundation uh, accurately, so that they will act uh, very you know strongly against that particular load uh, whenever it is applicable during the flood scenario. Then sufficient anchorage need to be installed for the storage tank and other sealed conduit pipes and other thing, because with the motion if this anchorage is not there, so that will be blown away. If we have a water tank just in your premises um, or uh, somewhere like it is at the top of your rooftop, but it is just simply placed. So, wherever there is a heavy thrust or so, so heavy wind thunderstorm that may also create the problem. If it is like a conduit pipe and all, so that is also exposed, uh, so that may damage. So, if there is any leakage, so that may also uh, get affected during the flow of water uh, and in flood situation and then definitely that will create multiple problem for the drinking water or the daily services and that create the environment really unhealthy. So, we should avoid that scenario with a proper anchorage. Now, coming to the summary, here we have seen that again the flood is something where it is uh, the overflow of the water that may cause due to the overflow of the river or it may be um, like due to the unprecedented rain in, in a closed form where the drainage system is not adequate. So, all of a sudden heavy rain and storm will make the scenario and then the, uh, the it will affect the foundation, it will affect uh, the your wall, it may really affect the total building as a whole and then what we need to do basically we have to just uh, make us ready, we have to prepare ourselves to uh, reduce the risk of that. And there are different ways that we have seen in this discussion by which we can uh, reduce the risk. One is uh, the raise the elevation is the technique. Okay, so, where this elevation should be your base flat elevation and like increasing the plinth, this is one. Then we have also uh, seen the dry flood proofing technique where like we will not allow water to penetrate and for that whatever the openings and other uh, elements are there. So, we have to protect with a uh, you know movable uh, flood uh, panel. So, that will help. So, whenever there is no risk or risk is uh, now not at that level. So, then we can remove it. Then we can go for a weight flood proofing. So, in wet flood proofing, uh, it is contrast to the dry proofing. So, we will allow water and that is why we take our building uh, at different heights. So, water can easily pass through and whenever there is uh, no water, this can be used as a basement, this can be used as uh, your parking etcetera. So, this is uh, your wet dam, uh, wet flood uh, proofing and this is your dry flood proofing. Now, uh, apart from this what we can do extra that is your flood wall and also we can go with the levy. So, we can create the flood wall at the boundary. So, that water level that will not go out and whatever the water accumulated inside that will be pumped out uh, to the external and in the levy it is the mount uh, again um, that will uh, actually you know help for the city level or the individual level. And the sixth one is the anchorage which will be taken care of with the structure and also uh, the non-structural elements like the pipe and other things. So, that the damage will be less um, so that we can do it. Now, considering the form, uh, there is no such basic, basic form that being described here, uh, but the thing is all related to whether we will allow water to flow which will help 
to get less impact on the surface and if you do not have this option to lift it up or you have other concerns then probably you have to go with the uh, dry flood proofing where you have to provide the proper shield uh, during this flood situation by which we can reduce it. And definitely uh, the with the previous discussion as well the wind um, then seismic activity this flood if a area is of multi uh, disaster prone area. So, definitely we should uh, be very much careful uh, like maybe we cannot stop the phenomena to you know get offered if it is a natural in nature not man made, but at least we can make our building taking those kind of uh, you know concept and following different guidelines which are available. So, that we can reduce the risk during that hazard. So, with that I uh, conclude this thing for uh, study you can go through uh, some of the phase of flood resistant design and construction guideline from American Society of Civil Engineers publications you will get such more information even uh, you can search some of the reports that being uh, developed like in the context of Indian cities. So, that it will help you and even the risk what we have discussed today is in very general, but this uh, uh, you know phenomena like this flood and the risk associated in the rural area is quite high uh, as because the building materials they use the technology they used uh, they will fail to resist during that. So, with that we will have a discussion we will discuss in one lecture of cost effective uh, you know uh, your uh, structure and architecture. So, where we will discuss again how to make the structure with uh, the cost effectiveness and even without compromising uh, all, all this uh, threat. So, basically um, uh, how to make your building earthquake resistance or flood resistance with the low cost technology even for the rural housing that we will be discussing in the next lecture. So, that is the lecture that is upcoming which is lecture number 34 cost effective structure and architecture. So, this will be very much helpful to know not only the high rise skyscraper and different beautiful structure. Now, also this can be achieved with some cost effective technique in terms of material in terms of technology and we will be discussing that in the next lecture. Again I thank you all to take part in this course and uh, definitely uh, uh, like I will be uh, waiting for meeting you in the next lecture. Thank you.